Hi, my name is Anton. I work at in Intel and I'm here to present current results of OpenCL C3 support process in Clan and tell you about future improvements and ongoing work. OpenCL is a standard for heterogeneous computing. Uh, OpenCL C3 was released not so long ago and I've been working on its support in Clan. New language standard is now backward compatible with 1.2 and makes 2.0 features optional, which allows vendors to port OpenCL implementations on a high variety of devices by choosing necessary functionality to implement. In new specification, there were introduced feature markers to indicate the availability of optional functionality. Those feature markers are defined by target depending on whenever the target architecture supports feature or not. Uh, it's worth mentioning that there are no big conceptual changes done in Clang, with mostly all of the features supported. Also, there already exists such concept as extensions in OpenCL, and current infrastructure for extensions has been highly reduced to, to implement OpenCL C3 support. Some work is still in progress and relates to device and queue support. Device and queue is a feature that allows to submit additional work for execution on the device side. OpenCell provide built-in functions for that purpose, which take block as, as an argument. Blocks use standard Objective-C syntax and describe that additional work to execute. They are initialized with block literal, or lit literal expression containing a function to execute and some additional fields, which also may be values of captured variables. Due to existing ABI, block literal for a block with no captures is emitted in global scope as an optimization. In OpenCL, global address space is used now for such block literal, and uh, this is actually valid. However, in OpenCL C3, support of global variables in global address space is an optional feature. And if that feature is not supported, that is actually an incorrect IR mission. Now it proposed to emit a block literal for blocks with no captures in local scope. That doesn't work for blocks which are declared in global scope as they have to be initialized at the moment of declaration. For global block, block, some refactoring and code generation may be needed to support constant address space, but that's currently under discussion yet. As it comes to refactoring, processing of implicit DAP definitions was simplified. For example, ST nodes for some types, which depend on certain features were created whenever the functionality is supported or not. Those nodes don't have to be there, as they depend on option settings and specific to open sale optional functionality. Such removal simplifies diagnostics output and uh, to not confuse users with unknown types and simplifies compilation flow by emitting diagnostic as soon as possible. Uh, huge done, a huge work has been done in processing of OpenCL option settings and particularly in Clan. Uh, current infrastructure of option settings is slightly violates some conceptual architectural assumptions and namely language options and target options may augment each other. For example, language specification may define the size of some type, uh, and eventually this also works in a reverse direction when target capabilities allow some specific language constructions. By the way, this is actually the case for OpenCL, for example, for generic address space, pipes, and blocks. But there are some other cases, such as arithmetic tenses and Altivec extension and PPC target. As a result, target is not immutable after its creation as it meant to be, there is a method uh, adjust which actually informs the target information about language options and that's target information modified. This is not an elegant solution and there have been proposed some extensions to current interfaces, in particular distinguishing responsibilities in this whole process of option settings. Target information is created regards to language settings, while language settings are allowed to be changed further. This actually doesn't contradict any rules as currently such effect may also happen when, for example, parsing a specific pragma statement. Huge work has also been done for processing OpenCell built-ins. Uh, originally, all the OpenCell built-in functions were de declared in the internal client header. Later, user had to explicitly specify special option to use built-ins in a kernel source. This increased the compilation time because front-end had to always parse this internal header containing a huge amount of functions declared. And uh, the other approach had been introduced. The key idea is to perform dynamic lookup to resolve names by necessity from table which is auto-generated from table gen, and this approach was enabled by default with special option for falling back to the old behavior. In future, we are planning to fully deprecate internal header by extending a fast table gen based header with all the missing built-ins. Uh, to achieve this goal, soft switching scheme is proposed, 
uh, internal client header can be used later for testing when we refine contents of TableGen based implementation. And of course, we plan to finish the support of OpenCLC 3 with supporting device and queue and the rest of OpenCell buildings. That's the list of contributors. Thanks everyone who participated and continues to work on OpenCLC 3 and on OpenCL support in Clan in general. Feel free to reach us out via mailing list. That's all I have for today. Thanks for attention.